All right, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. John Stanko and Michael Ritz here previewing your week two NFL matchups. Mike, how you doing this Thursday? I'm doing okay, Johnny. How you doing? Happy birthday to your girlfriend, Monique. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we'll be celebrating this weekend. All right, so we're going to start with tonight's game. It's the big game here in, New, here in the New Rochelle area. It is the New York Jets at the New England Patriots tonight, 8 o'clock on the NFL Network. And the Jets got lucky week one, and so did the Patriots with their wins. How do you see this one going? Uh, well, let's start off by talking about how Mark Sanchez is out for the year now. Yes. Uh, he's going to have season-ending <laughs> season surgery, so the quarterback battle is finally over. Mm-hmm. It's going to be Geno Smith for as long as he can possibly go. Um, and I think also with the Patriots, the Shane Vereen is going to be out for quite some time, which yep. definitely hurts the Patriots. Uh, both teams didn't really impress me. Uh, going into week uh, at week one until I until Brady came up big uh, in the clutch with and, and Amendola, yep. but Amendola's also hurt too. Both these teams are kind of banged up. He's out. Um, this this I think this game's gonna be closer than I thought it was gonna be because of all the injuries. But I still see the Patriots taking it. They're they're in New England. I don't, you, think, you think the Jets are gonna go into New England and come away with the win? I don't. So um, for for me, I know I know you're gonna feel the same way. I see New England taking this one. That's right. Um, also, Zach Sudfeld is out for New England too, starting tight end. Oh, so who man uh, with a crazy Hawaiian last name is most likely gonna start at tight end, and he's not a good pass catcher. He's more of a blocker. Stephen Ridley cannot fumble the ball. Because if you give the Jets any life, I mean, they're going to want to win this game bad. If you give them life, they may have a shot. If they get to Brady, they have a shot. But the fact of the matter is, Brady hates the Jets, I think, more than any other team. He, he has said it before, he loves to play them and beat them. And I think it's going to be a case where it's going to be close than people think, especially with the injuries to New England. Um, but Julian Edelman, I think, might have a big game because Cromartie, who is he going to line up against? Because there's no stud New England receiver anymore. He can't go on one person. I think New England takes one. It'll be close. I have 27-17 as my score. Uh, Patriots getting a late score to win it. But uh, it should be it should be a very, very entertaining game. And no more undefeated talk for the Jets. Oh, man. Oh, or, yeah. I don't, who, God knows what they're going to be talking about now. If, if the Jets lose this game, yeah. who, I wonder who will get fired and, and uh, what the storylines will be for this team. But going into the next game, uh, St. Louis Rams coming up a pretty, a pretty good win um, in week one. Going against the Falcons, who had a, had a very good shot at beating a good team. Uh, in week one, they were uh, they were a, a goal line touchdown away yep. from, uh, from coming up with the win. But uh, here it's it's Matty Ice in the dome. Uh, I don't see the Falcons going starting the season off zero and two. Uh, the Rams did surprise me with coming away with the win against the Cardinals yeah. um, in week one. But I don't see the Rams pulling away at this one. It's Matty Ice in the dome. It's the Falcons. They're not going to start off the season zero and two. Yeah, that's the thing. The Falcons are too good to start off zero and two. I think it's as simple as that. St. Louis did play well against Arizona. Arizona, and credit to Arizona for playing well. Also, that was a great game. No, not many people got yeah, to watch it. Not, yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I mean, the way the way you think of it is, Stephen Jackson didn't really do much Week One against Falcons. Roddy White is still banged up for the Falcons. The question is, can Matt I, can Matty I step up and have that big late moment if he needs it? I don't think they're going to. Um, I think the Falcons take this one. It, can I see the Rams pulling it off? Possibly, but really doubt it. I mean, unless their defense or special teams make a big makes a big play, uh, I see the Falcons taking one. They're just a more talented team, and it, sim- simply put, they are too good to start the season off on two. Yeah, I, I completely agree. An interesting game, which I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this, but it's going to be Cleveland against Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Baltimore, we we hit the nail on the head uh, last week. In our podcast, saying the Ravens aren't going to be that good, and they get trounced by the Broncos. It wasn't even now. Close. I'm not going to compare the Broncos to the Browns because that'd just be unfair. But I'm saying that they're going to have to fight for their wins for the Ravens throughout the season. Yeah. And, this, and this is going to be a good example. I think with the Browns, they have Trent Richardson. So anytime you have one of the better backs in the league, you're gonna you're, you're gonna have a chance to win this game. Um, and also, I think Baltimore is going to be vulnerable even at home. Um, last season and throughout the throughout seasons past, the Ravens at home were, were money. They were like the, they yeah. were like the Falcons, but um, and, and the Seahawks. But um, it, I, I think it's going to be close than what people think. Um, I'll probably stick with the Ravens here uh, because I think I think Flacco is too good to be honest with you. Uh-huh. So I'm going to pick the Ravens, but I also think that it's going to be close than what people think. Um, I agree with you that the Ravens are going to need to fight for all their wins, except this one. I think they're going to kill the Browns. They've had extra time to prepare. Brandon Whedon threw three picks uh, last game. He didn't look really good. Um, the Ravens are going to be so angry. I mean, I just think they're going to come out with a... I'm, 
Harbaugh is going to get them so pumped up. They they're gonna they're gonna win this game. I think by a landslide. I think Trent Richardson might have a good game, sure, but I think that Flacco is going to come out and want to show people that he's not lost without Anquan Bolden. He's going to try and throw some deep balls at Torrey Smith. Um, can the can Cleveland give them some problems? I mean, sure, it's a division game. It's a rivalry. Um, I mean, well, I mean, some AFC North team has to get a win this weekend. <laughs> it, could be, it could be the Ravens or the Browns. But um, the way I see it is that it's. I think the Ravens are going to trounce them. I, I really think they're just going to be so angry with the extra time to prepare. I see the Browns having absolutely no shot. If I was in a Survivor game, this is the game I would pick. All right, all right. So, so a, a bold, a bold, uh, bold assumption out of Stanko, which I mean, I can, I can agree with. Uh, I think it'd be good, kind of, see the Baltimore kind of snap out of it. But going into the next game, probably the one of the most even, even matches of the, yes. of, of the week is the Carolina Panthers going into Buffalo and taking on the Bills. Mm-hmm. Um, Carolina. They had a shot at beating the Seahawks, which yep. um, their their defense was there, um, but Cam wasn't. Cam did no, not, Cam did Cam not, did have, not a have a good game um, against Seattle. Yeah. Now you can credit—I don't know if that's credit to see, uh, Seattle's defense, mm-hmm. um, or or was it Cam just kind of kind of getting rusty here in the, yep. in, the, in, the, in week one? So you, you really don't know. But Buffalo, um, Buffalo had a real good shot at beating uh, beating your Patriots last week. And um, EJ Manuel was uh, was impressive to, uh, towards la- later on in the game. He really proved some doubters wrong. He did, he did, and um, and I think this is going to be this is a toss up. But uh, did you see Buffalo's fans last week? Yeah, they were they were great. They, they, were, were, they were they were very were, very good. They were very energetic, and just just because of that, I'm going to pick the Bills because they're they're at home. Um, Maybe I think Carolina is probably more the, the more talented team here, but I, I don't think they can put it all together. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Bills. It's probably probably a bold pick, and I can see a lot of people picking Carolina, but I'm gonna pick the Bills here. I'm going with Carolina. I'm gonna go the opposite of you, uh, only because Carol uh, Ca- the Bills are gonna be without three starters in their secondary, um, and I think Cam Newton, after throwing only 125 yards last week, is gonna gonna want to come out and show that wasn't uh, that, that that game was a fluke and he, he still has it uh, also what worried me was Fred Jackson had more rushing yards than CJ Spiller last week uh, CJ Spiller did not have a good game and he was supposed to be their number one feed him the ball to he pukes and he didn't have that good of a game so I'm also I'm a little bit worried about that um, but I just I think Carolina their defense played really well against Seattle Luke Heakley is a beast at linebacker and I think it's going to be really close. And again, it's a toss-up game. But I think that the depleted secondary, of the Bills, is going to be exposed. I expect Steve Smith to have a touchdown. Cam Newton to at least throw throw for over 250 yards. Uh, I see Carolina take it. It's going to be really close. I will give you that. But um, I'm going to have to say that Carolina takes this one. I think it's good that Fred Jackson is actually running the ball well because it's they're not going to have to rely on C.J. Spiller as much. So the fact that Fred Jackson is still getting carries is good, and I think it opens up the backfield to do dump offs and, and whatnot. But yeah, let's our first disagreement. Let's see how that goes. But heading into our next game, we got the Minnesota Vikings going on against uh, going to Chicago to take on the Bears. Yo, um, the Bears. I think you just got double check commercial with Aaron Rodgers. Have you seen it? It's fantastic. It's very, it very good. It's fantastic. Just got double check. Oh my lord! <laughs> He's sitting in between the two Bears fans. Classic. <laughs> but how do you see this game going, Stanko? Um, I will say this: that Minnesota, dis- Minnesota's offense, I think, looked better last week than I expected. Chris Ponder, despite throwing three picks, they were able to muster up twenty-four points. I believe it was against Detroit. Yeah. Um. That being said, their defense did not look as good as I thought it would, nope. allowing Reggie Bush to run wild and allowing 34 points. Um, I see Chicago taking this one, but again, it's a rivalry game. I think it's going to be close. I expect Adrian Peterson to have over 100 yards after only getting a – he fell short of 100 after that 78-yard run to open up the game. I expect him to have over 100 yards. Um, Jay Cutler looked really well, uh, looked pretty good. Um, I just see Chicago taking it. It's, co- it's a close game, but their defense is better than uh, Detroit's, and I think they'll shut Minnesota down a little bit more, and Chicago will pull it out. Yeah, I agree. I, I have Chicago in this game. I was surprised that Peterson did not have a good game uh, last week, especially starting off with a 78-yard 70, yeah. run. Well, he had three touchdowns. Let's just say he didn't have a bad game. Yeah. He, he, just rushing-wise, he I wasn't just, up to yeah. the standard. And the fact, the fact is... Christian Ponder stinks. I, I just, I just, I really. <laughs> there is I really no think other there way. There is to no put other that. way to put it. He's just not a good quarterback. And if you're going to go on the road, you're going to play Chicago. You got, you got to put up some points. And I don't think Minnesota has enough. They just have Adrian Peterson. We've said it before. 
and um, it's just going to come down to Chicago as has too many pieces at home. So I, th I think Chicago is the team here. All right, well, then moving on to our next game, we got a team that has a lot of weapons. The Green Bay Packers coming off a tough loss to San Francisco. They're hosting Washington, who had a great second half against Philadelphia, but their defense was exposed in the first half. How do you see this one going? <sighs> well, I'm a little angry at the Redskins because I picked them last week and they lost. But um, this is going to be an interesting game. I, th I really I really think it's, this is going to be a pretty close game. Uh, I think Washington really worked out some kinks in the second half. They did. I think, I think RG3 needed needed those reps to kind of to kind of get in the swing of things uh, against the Eagles. Um, but I, I have Green Bay in this game. Um, I think I think Green Bay is very mad that they lost that game against the Niners. Mm -hmm. um, definitely game of the week uh, last week. Oh, uh, by far. So I think they I, I think they're very angry. I think the, the fact that Eddie Lacy actually had a very good game and um, they, they might actually might have a run game this year with with, with Lacy mm -hmm. um, will, will will definitely benefit the Packers. A Aaron Rodgers, um, you you really can't count him out. So I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the Packers. Hopefully, hopefully for my Giants' sake, that the Packers can, can come away at home at Lambeau with the win. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got outplayed last week by Colin Kaepernick. He will not get outplayed a second straight week. It just won't happen. RG three threw the ball 49 times last week. Alfred Morris only touched the ball 13 times. You are not gonna win Washington if you're doing that. The way, the only way they have a chance to win that game is if Alfred Morris gets 25 touches and you allow him to do what he does best, what he did last year. Uh, but with that being said, I still see Green Bay taking it just because they have more offensive talent. Uh, the, the secondary of Washington was exposed in the first half against Philadelphia. Deshaun Jackson ran wild. Michael Vick had a great game throwing the ball. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have another good game. It, it'll be high scoring, I think, but I just think Green Bay at, at home, at Lambeau, they're going to take this one and they're going to they're gonna improve to 1-1. One one. Yeah, any game that Green Bay plays is going to be high scoring because they have no defense and they yeah. have a really good offense. But I think Mike Shanahan needs to I, – I, he's definitely on the hot seat in my book because – He's had a couple rough seasons with Washington. The whole Albert Hainsworth thing, the whole Donovan McNabb yeah. thing, and now RG three clearly wasn't on the same page with Shanahan and his and, and his injury to get to mm -hmm. kind of get back into it. Yep. And if he has a if, if he's a bad year this year, um, I think Washington gets rid of him. I don't know how you feel about it because the the Redskins they ha they have they have the pieces to be pretty good in a division where it's very up in the air this this year. And I mean, what, the Washington's crazy. They they will they will get rid of him, I, I oh. believe. Um, but I think that they might they might have a point if they do because he's he's had a lot of he's, he's had a lot of head on um, arguments and obviously yeah. he's not on the same page with a lot of his players. I, which once yeah. once you see that, and especially if RG three kind of feels that way, the, the, they'll pick the superstar over the coach. I mean, RG three will never say it. He'll never say I don't disagree. He's a young player, and he'd get bashed for that. He's never going to say it. He's too smart for that. But I, there's obvious tension between them. I mean, Shanahan is an old school coach. It's his way or the highway. And you have to live with it or you're gone. Uh, but in this case, it's the league now where the superstars come before the coaches. We've, we see it in the NBA, and it's coming out of the NFL as well. Uh, do I think he's in, on the hot seat right now? No, because he opened up against a tough division opponent in Philadelphia. But if he goes like halfway through the season with only a couple wins, then I see the fire underneath him getting a little bit hotter. Then I see some pressure cooking for him. Absolutely. I, yeah, you, I think that you hit the nail on the head. Um, going into the next game, Titans going to Houston. Houston was a little Houston, shaky. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, Houston <laughs> was a little shaky. Getting get, get, get me and Johnny worried in the first half uh, against the Chargers. They made Phillip Rivers look good. 28-7 they were down, but then they really woke up and said, I guess for the Texans and they are the Chargers, so we yes. cannot lose this game. Um, ended up pulling away with a 31-28 win. Um, this, it was a tale of two halves. Shaw played well in the second half, mm -hmm. and um, I think the fact that they might have been away in San Diego might have been something. But I'm not gonna pick. I, I'm not not gonna pick Houston here. Um, they're, Houston's are, it's their first home game. They, they got to be all pumped up about that. Um, I think I think Shab Shab is an okay quarterback. I think he's a little overrated to be honest with you. But he has too many pieces to not be good. Tennessee doesn't have any pieces at all. Um, and I, it's just a simple fact that Houston's a better team in Tennessee, and Houston's going to win. Uh, Tennessee played Pittsburgh last week and got the win over Pittsburgh after starting the game with a safety. So that's how bad Pittsburgh played. Also, Tennessee had the 30th ranked offense after Week One, and they still, they still won, won the game. That's how bad. The that's how bad were. the Steelers played. If Houston gets up early in this game, it's over. It's over. It's over. If if Tennessee can maybe keep it within three and keep it close for the end, you never know what can happen because they did play better than people expected to be going, especially on the defensive end. 
But if they get down early, this game's over. Houston, I think, will get up early. Arian Foster will not be uh, kept down on the ground again. He had less than 50 yards week one. He'll have a he'll have a better bounce back week. Um, the way he, if Houston's going to get up early, and I think they win pretty easily in this one. First division home game, you, you got to give it to Houston. Yeah, without a doubt. Going to the next game, my Miami Dolphins with the big win last week. Then they're going up against the Colts, who also kind of kind of escaped escaped the win at home last week. Um, how is this game going? Uh, yeah, the Cleveland Browns did not, did not fulfill my bold prediction last week. It was, let's just put it that way. Um, but I, I think the Colts win this game um, only because Mike Wallace had 15 yards receiving for the Dolphins, and he was not happy after the game. His comments were obvious that he was disappointed with the coaches after the play calls. I believe he was only targeted about five or six times. That was it. Um, also, their running game. Oh, my God. What happened to Lamar Miller? Zero fantasy points. And he was a high running back pick. He did nothing. Daniel Thomas had more rushing yards than him. Oh, really, just absolutely terrible. And Andrew Luck, who had, I believe, 38 rushing yards last week, had more total yards than Mike Wallace, Daniel Thomas, and Lamar Miller combined. Ouch. Just just rushing on that play. Ouch. Uh, just rushing those 38 yards. So the Colts are going to take this one. Uh, it's, I think it might be close, but the way, I, the, frankly, the, frank, the fact of the matter is Miami's offense didn't look that great against uh, Cleveland last week. And Indianapolis Colts, Andrew Luck is a phenomenal quarterback, and they're, they're going to take this one. I think I can see this game being close. I can see this game being a field goal, and but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Colts as well. Um, I think Tannehill did enough. Obviously, he he did enough to win last week. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he didn't target Mike Wallace, they still ended up scoring scoring a significant amount of points. So um, they they were able to get they were able to get scores without Mike Wallace, which. If you're a Dolphins fan, that, that, that's your silver lining. You're scoring yeah. points without Mike Wallace, probably one of the better receivers in the league. Do you trust Tannehill getting him the ball on a week-to-week basis? Um, I think now that Mike Wallace called him out, yes. I think uh, I think Tan I think Tannehill would, is going to take it personal because Mike Wallace is like, why am I here? Why are you paying yeah. me all this money with that, with only getting five or six targets last week? But also, I think Mike Wallace can see that they won last week. It, yeah. it, it wasn't like you lost by forty. They ended up getting the win. But this week you're, you're playing in Indianapolis, who has had to escape a win against the Raiders. Um, last week but I'm, I'm gonna pick the Colts by a field goal um, I think Andrew Luck's too good um, and I think that I, I really cannot see Miami starting off the season 2-0 so I'm gonna pick Indy in this game I agree with you now we're gonna move on to the next game very close competitive game uh, really did split 50-50 the experts and the users everything Dallas at Kansas City Dallas beat the Giants a very good team but they could barely beat them Despite the Giants having six turnovers, Alex Smith looked good for Kansas City, but Jamal Charles is banged up. You don't know how he's going to be. Uh, who do you got in this Dallas-Kansas City game? This game is definitely a toss-up. Um, I, I'm going to go with a bull prediction, and I don't even count as a bull prediction. I'm going to pick Dallas this game because I their majority of their team is there. Yep. And, the, and the Chiefs, even though they looked good, even though they looked good, it was against Jacksonville. Um, doesn't mean much. Doesn't mean much. So unless Kansas City comes up and scrapes Dallas, then I'll pick Kansas City in week three. But going into this game, I'm going to pick Dallas. I think they're the more complete team. Um, I yes, they. I mean, their defense. They they swarmed. They swarmed the Giants. Um, and even though even though they only won by five, I think that's just because they're playing. They're playing the Giants, and that's the type of game that the Giants kind of play. Yeah. Um, kind of march down the field in a minute. And yeah. Then, and then they they are very injury uh, injury prone, very uh, turnover prone. Yes. And I think I think there's a stat Eli Manning since 2004 has the most thrown interceptions. He also so, has two Super Bowls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I'm gonna anyway. I'm gonna pick Dallas in this game. Um, I think Demarco Murray is also set to have to, to just run all over Kansas City's defense. To be honest with you, and with Jamal Charles being hurt, um, Kansas City lo- loses loses an offensive threat. Which, with compared with Dallas's defense, is gonna is gonna give a uh, definite uh, plus to Dallas. I'm gonna pick Dallas this game. Uh, I agree with you. I was surprised. I thought you were gonna go with Kansas City. Um, but Jamal Charles, you gotta see how healthy he's going to be for the game. People say he's gonna play, but is he gonna be banked up? That's the real question. He's gonna be at 100. percent If Dallas can force Alex Smith to throw an interception or two, because Alex Smith is characteristically takes very good care of the ball. If you could force him to throw a turnover or two, uh, I think Dallas is in very good shape. I think Dallas's offense is really good. Their defense. Well, let up some big plays to the Giants. And if they limit that, now Smith is not a big play quarterback. He's a game manager, and I think that works in the Cowboys' favor. That's why I have them taking this game. Uh, we're moving on to our next game. Speaking of big plays, the Eagles had plenty of them against the Redskins in week one on Monday night. And they're going up against San Diego, who had a fourth quarter that really is just one of, they, they really want to forget, especially to start a season. 
Who do you got in this Philadelphia San Diego game? I hate, really hate both teams. Uh, <laughs> Philly was impressive in the first half, but that's all they were. They yes. were impressive in the first half. So you don't know. Um, and Chip Kelly comes in and says, "Oh, we could have gone faster." How did casual? I, I just did casually. casual. Just casually. Oh, we can go fast. They had 53 plays in the first half. Um, so. Obviously, Philly's offense isn't where they want to be yet, mm-hmm. which is, is kind of understandable for not being able to co- finish the game um, uh, last week. But it's also scary seeing how effective they were it's very when they scary. were running it right. It's very well, when, when running it right, they, they, they can't get tackled. And they're nice, fast, up-tempo. They, they, they tied off the defense. But I think we, we also said it. I think that their offense got tired after a while, and I think that's what caused them to, for their offense to slow down. The Chargers were impressive last week. Um, for the most part. For the most part. And that was their full team. I mean, I think uh, b- b- both sides are pretty healthy. Yeah. Um, uh, I think for me, I'm just going to stick. I'm going to stick with Philly here. Um, it's pro- probably bold, but I really don't think San Diego is going to be playing the way they did um, against Houston all the time. I think San Diego's away. Philly's going to be pumped up their home. Um, and I think I, I think Mike Vick is is is, is going is is ready to have a solid year. He played solid against the Redskins. Um, so as long as he stays healthy, which as of right now he is, yep. this is the best Mike Vick you're going to get. And in, in, yep. in these first six games, this will be Mike Vick's best uh, part uh, part of the season because when he gets the, the more he gets hit, the, the less effective he's going to be. Yep. So at least for right now, um, and right here in week two, I'm going to pick Philly over San Diego. Uh, I got the same thing as you. Despite Ryan Matthews playing better than people expected week one uh, for San Diego, LaShawn McCoy was terrific. So good. Terrific for Philadelphia. So good. He had some juke moves that were reminiscent of years past, and he was just running by people. Uh, I got Philadelphia in this one. It's their first home game. I don't even think it's a bold pick. I think it's a pretty easy one. First home game, Chip Kelly's offense. You saw how, how San Diego collapsed in the fourth quarter against Houston. Uh, can they handle the offensive tempo for the Eagles for a whole game? I, just, I frankly just don't see it at all. Yeah, no. uh, that's gonna be. I really think it's gonna be close, though. I don't know. I don't know how you see it. If if uh, if you want to give a score, but I really see this uh, pretty close because the Chargers kind of hang in games. Yeah, they hang in games, but they can never pull it out. I see Philadelphia winning by at least ten. I'm gonna be honest with you. Scoring thirty points, winning by at least ten. All right, and that's the type of game that Philly wants. Philly wants thirty plus. Yep. 30 plus points, and then if you beat us, you beat us. That's that, that, that's gonna be Philly's game this year. Yep. But heading in the next game, I think I, I think this is gonna be a pretty good game. You got the Lions who came out with the win yep. uh, last week, going against going against the Cardinals at home. Mm-hmm. Um, the Cardinals weren't able to pull it out against the Rams uh, on the road last week, but they played well. I think they played. They impressed a lot. Of people. Yeah, they, they they played better than what people thought, including myself. Even though I did have them beating the Rams last week, um, <laughs> but. Um, it's gonna be. I think Detroit is a better team. But what do you? Uh, how do you see this game going? Take them. Both quarterbacks threw for threw for over three hundred yards last week. And frankly, the highlight is gonna be Calvin Johnson versus Larry Fitzgerald. Absolutely. I mean, you got two of the best, maybe two of the, the two best wide receivers going up against each other. Larry Fitzgerald has a quarterback for the first time in ever since Kurt Warner, basically. So uh, the way it, it's gonna be a close game. Um, I do see Detroit pulling it out because Reggie Bush is the difference maker at running back. And Arizona, frankly, doesn't have a very good run game right now. Uh, so that's the way I see it. Reggie Bush, he got, he got his thumb dislocated in the beginning of the game against the Vikings. Got to pop back in. Boom. Just still went for almost two, over 200 total yards. Uh, Reggie Bush is going to be the key factor. Detroit pointed out. It'll be close. Uh, maybe a field goal, a touchdown difference. But Detroit moves up to 2-0. I'm going to have Detroit as well. I don't know if you saw uh, Arizona head coach Bruce Arians. With Larry Fitzgerald on his team, said that Calvin Johnson is the best receiver in the game. Ooh. So that might stir up something. I don't know if he said it to get a little fire. That's Larry I'm thinking, a little bit uh, of motivation. Yeah, maybe a little motivation. But that's. I mean, that's. I think he's right. I mean, I I, I would pick Calvin, yep. but yep. Uh, but for your own coach to kind of say that is uh, is definitely interesting. But I have Detroit. I think uh, yeah, we because we we said in the last week in the podcast too that Reggie Bush is definitely a difference maker. It's gonna benefit Calvin Johnson so much because the because the Lions just have another weapon to go to. Yep. they don't have to rely on Calvin Johnson. But Calvin Johnson only had thirty seven yards receiving last week. And they scored 34 points. And they still scored 34 points. So, yeah. So, for me, I didn't think Detroit's the, the pick here. Arizona, they do have some pieces, but I don't, I don't think they have enough to win, to at least, at least win this week. Um, but, yeah, so I, I see Detroit coming out on top. 
I completely agree with you. Now let's move on to another game. New Orleans taking on Tampa Bay. Uh, really, two teams that had polar opposite week ones. New Orleans with a really impressive win over Atlanta. Uh, great start to Sean Payton back to the sideline. And yet Tampa Bay collapsing. Horrible loss to the Jets week one. Greg Schiano on the hot seat already for Tampa Bay. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I'm excited to see Darrell Reavers versus Drew Brees because he got the best corner in the league versus one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But that being said, New Orleans has just more talent. Tampa Bay offense didn't do much against the Jets defense, and frankly, the Saints defense played well against the Falcons. I got New Orleans taking this one pretty easily despite it being in Tampa Bay. Yeah, this is my best bet, to be honest with you. I think it's a no-brainer. The Saints are going to kill the Buccaneers. Uh, even if the Buccaneers are at home, all right, so it leaves them in there for another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think that the Saints have too much of an offense. I mean, the Saints defense impressed last week. I think the Buccaneers offense, who was supposed to be pretty good, didn't do anything against the Jets, and I think the Buccaneers defense didn't do anything against the Jets either when, when they needed stops. Yeah. Um, so, with that said, I mean, it's pretty it's, it's pretty easy, a pretty quick one for us here now that the Saints are just going to kill the Buccaneers. Yeah, I think that, I think that was what will be the most unanimous pick of the week, I think. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. But heading into the next game, uh, uh, Manning versus Manning. We have, uh, there we go. We have Broncos going against the Giants, Peyton versus Eli, Peyton 2 0 against his brother uh, uh, in, their, in their careers. Uh, Denver coming off a great win against Baltimore, killed them. Peyton coming off a great performance in seven touchdowns. Legendary touchdown. performance. A great, yeah, a legendary performance. And then you have Eli, who might be a legendary performance the way you look at it with the six turnovers. <laughs> and despite, yeah, leading his team back with the chance Le to win. Leading his team back with a chance to win, but. Um, this is a tough game for me um, because it's the Giants. It's your boy, your The Giants nice. needed to win last week because they're going up against one of the best teams in the league this week. Um, I think for me now, for the sake of the podcast, I'm going to pick the Broncos uh, because I think their offense is too much right now, and I think the Giants have a lot going on right now up in the air. Um, we said it that the Giants are going to be better later on in the season. They got to figure some things out first here now, and uh, with their running back problems, they did. Recently signed Brandon Jacobs. Brandon Jacobs is coming back. Um, they, How do you feel about that? I like it. I, I, I like it for just for the sake of the goal line, um, to be honest with you. But we still need our every every down back because of what we don't have. Um, Daniel Wilson is going to be a, uh, a nutcase now because everything he does is going to be second-guessed by him and by the team. Yep. So I don't think he has any confidence. I don't think Tom Coughlin has any confidence in him. Um, so the, the Giants have too much going on right now um, for them to kind of pull out to pull out a win against Denver out of all teams that they yeah for for them to play this week. So I'm going to pick Denver. I, I, the, I think the safe pick is Denver. I think the safe pick is Denver as well. I think this game is going to be really high scoring because the Giants they can score with the best of them. Uh, they really can. Uh, but frankly, the Denver can score better than the Giants. Uh, Denver. The way they performed week one. Also, now they have extended rest, extended preparation time since they played on the Thursday last week. Um, it'll be close. It's also Giants' first home game, and you can't underestimate that. I mean, the oh, Maryland, I love it. I mean, uh, the Maryland's must be going. Oh, will be going nuts. It's, it's definitely one of the. It's, it's going to be one of the games of the year for the Giants. So to, to have Denver in there um, at, at MetLife is, is definitely going to be big. Yeah, yeah. MetLife. Uh, but I got. I want to ask you this question because you mentioned David Wilson's psyche right now, completely messed up. Oh yeah. I mean, completely messed up. Now, I, for me, I put most of the blame on, on Tom Coughlin for that because he's so hard on every single mistake he makes. I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, I agree. I think that um, as a coach, especially in week one, if mistakes are made, you kind of just got to throw them back out there and just say, look, you're, you're going to be our guy this season. Even even if you see a switch being made later on in the season, you got to show look, some confidence. You're, you're going to be our guy. This is we, we want you to be at this position. But um, on the flip side, it, it it wasn't even the fumbles; it was the missed tackles that he had on offense, which which kind of kind of killed any any momentum the uh, Eli would have. Mm -hmm. um, Eli would get sacked just because of a, of, a, of a missed block, which is the last thing we need. But I agree that Coughlin does get too hard, especially on Wilson, um, because because I think I really think anything that he does now, he's gonna second guess. Now he's going to be a target. Coughlin said it that Wilson's going to be a target. Um, to, to, to when he gets the ball, because people are going to be strip, trying to strip yeah, him even more now. That's true. Um, so I think, uh, I, 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 like I said, it's going to be a, it's a bad time for the Giants to have these type of problems um, going up against one of the best teams in the NFL. I mean, also, the, there's a parallel between the Giants and the Patriots right now. Same thing happened to Stephen Ridley last week in Week 1. He, Steve, he was sat by Bill Belichick, didn't play the rest of the game after he had two fumbles. But now he's forced to be back in there because Shane Vereen got injured for the Patriots. 
Um, so that, that's an interesting parallel between two teams that don't like each other. They have the same problem right now, a running back who can't hold onto the ball and has been sat by their coaches. The difference is Stephen Ridley, his comments, seemed to, he seemed to acknowledge the fact he made a mistake and he's mentally strong enough to say, I'm going to improve on it. David Wilson, I have not seen that confidence from him personally. And I also think that Ridley's a better back than Wilson. I would take, I would take Ridley in a second but because um, I think Ridley's also bigger. But yeah, that mindset you need to have. Like, look, mistakes are going to be made. Even, even if you're Wilson now, he said, yeah, I understand I made a mistake and then whenever my number is called, then I'm going to go and then play my best. And that's all you can really ask for out of anybody. Yep. But that's I, that's not what he's doing. And Coughlin is tired of getting the questions um, from Wilson because Coughlin's kind of being sketchy about um, sketchy about the situation. But, uh, but yeah, I there, the, there's too much heat on the Giants right now. So uh, We both got Peyton we going both up 3-0 going up on the three goal. And we have the Broncos being 2-0 the Giants being 0-2 to start out the year. I'm sorry for your Giants. So it's, a, it's a rough day. All right, well, let's move on to the next game. We got a, uh, a team that really surprised people with how well they played with Oakland, hosting a team that looked basically like an FBS team in the Jacksonville Jaguars, scoring two points week one. Now, I really would want to see Alabama play Jacksonville. I think Alabama's offensive line would push Probably be better than Jacksonville's yeah, offensive it's line. It's ridiculous. I think Maurice jones Drew would gladly go play for Alabama. Yeah. Like, it's just... <laughs> It'd be ridiculous. Jack- Jacksonville was so bad at home um, last week. It was, it, was, it was terrible. It was just a terrible, terrible display. Ooh. And Oakland, who surprised people, they almost saw a win in, in Indy. Um, Terrell Pryor was great. He um, led the league in rushing. He let, he let, yeah, he, he let everybody in rushing last week. Um, he had that one bad interception to end the game, but that's what you do when you yeah, exactly. when, when you're trying to win. You got to force things. Uh, got to force things in there. Oakland's home. I think the no brainer right now is Oakland until the Jaguars show me any life. Um, uh, then I, which I don't that. think they're gonna because they are a very bad team. Good luck. With um, that. I'm gonna pick Oakland here. Uh, I agree. I mean, this is the match of two teams that I think will end up having at least in a top five picks in the NFL draft. They're they're two of the not better teams in the NFL. With that being said, though, Oakland did impress people, and, and Oakland did impress me in week one. But Chad Henney starting a quarterback this week for Jacksonville. you got to wonder if that's a spark, if that will give anything uh, to Cecil Shorts, a wide receiver, who had a decent game for Jacksonville despite Jacksonville not playing well. Um, but that being said, Oakland, Darren McFadden looked good week one. He looked like the Darren McFadden of old. And if, that's the, if that's the case moving forward, Oakland's going to be pretty dangerous. Yeah, Fantasy owners are happy about McFadden. I think the Raiders can be spoilers for a lot of teams with their capability. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Oakland, I think, is going to get the win. After playing well last week against Andrew Luck, they're going to get the win this week against Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. And now probably the game of the week, at least in my opinion, is going to be the 49ers coming up a big win against the Packers. Going up against the Seahawks, who are are, are money at home. Century um, Link Field, best yeah, home field are, advantage in football. Yeah, they are, they're money at home. They're coming off a tough win against... Uh, Carolina. Against Carolina, the 12-7 win against Carolina. And uh, is this going to be a tough game? Uh, Snake, how do you see it? I, I think this is the game of the week by far. I agree with you completely. And the is this might be a battle between two of the top three teams in the NFL. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think San Francisco, Denver, Seattle, that's my power rankings right now. One, two, three. Um, and Colin Kaepernick played out of his mind week one against Green Bay. And Russell Wilson eked out a win. He played tough. I mean, he was being chased all over the place. And the Seattle offensive line did not look good against Carolina's pressure. Um, but with that being said, it's at Century Link Field. And that home field advantage was proven last year that it was the best in the league tenfold compared to any other team. And I think Seattle is going to take this one with a field goal late. I think Colin Kaepernick is going to throw some interceptions because of the because of the crowd. He's not going to be able to communicate with his receivers. And Seattle, the, the, sixth, uh, the 12th man, if you will, I guess, since it's the football version, <laughs> is going to have a big impact. Seattle takes a really close one. I'm going to give you a score, 20 to 17. I think Frisco is going to win, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick the Niners. Um, I think the Niners are a better team than the Seahawks right now. Russell Wilson, yeah, yeah, they got the win. He didn't, he didn't do much last week. So I think that's how he's going to be all season. No, but he needs to kind of get in the swing of things. Marshawn Lynch struggled as well last week. Frank Gore struggled for San Francisco, though. 
Yeah, but Colin Kaepernick threw for over 400 yards. That's <laughs> true. And, and and they're going to be he just covered fine. up for Frank Gore's mistake. They're, yeah, they're they're going to be just fine. Um, Kaepernick, I, do I think he's going to throw an, uh, another 400 yard game? No, but I think Frank Gore is going to have a better game. I think that Kaepernick is starting to get into the starting to get a little comfortable being a pocket passer rather mm-hmm. than a rusher. But also, if they blitz him, he can also hurt people with his feet. He he didn't do it last week, but he, you, we know he's more than capable of doing it. Just yep. as the Packers last year. Um, so I, for me, I think the Niners are definitely one of the best teams in the league, and I think the Seahawks, the only thing going for them right now is that they're at home because I think they're a team that needs to needs to figure things out on offense. I think their defense is good, but they got to figure some, some something out on offense first. I'm going to pick the Niners in this game. I'm going to give you the key to the game right now. Go. If Seattle can shut down Anquan Bolden, keep him under eight catches and under 75 yards, Seattle wins the game. Okay. All right, I see that. Because he... Anquan Bolden had the game of his Anquan life Bolden, against Green yeah. Oh yeah, over two hundred, over two hundred yards, over ten receptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if Seattle can shut him down, which is hard, Seattle wins the game, and I think they do it. Okay, all right. Going into the Monday night game, you have the oh man, the, the struggling Pittsburgh Steelers. Was there a more disappointing no, team than Pittsburgh? No, there wasn't. I think I think the Jags might have played better than the Steelers. No, well, that's the thing. You expect the Jags you to be bad. The Jags you suck. don't expect Pittsburgh to be awful. The Steelers were terrible. Uh, going up against the Bengals team, who unfortunately did not come away with the win last week, which we thought that we thought that they we would. thought that was money in the bank. But you know what's money in the bank? The Bengals this week because there's at no home. way their Bengals are at home Monday night, all pumped up. The Steelers probably the Steelers can't have any confidence right now. No, uh, they really, really can't. like there's nothing positive they did this week. There's nothing, nothing positive to, to take did. from that. There's nothing that they did except there's the the, the safety on the opening kickoff was even um, <laughs> which which is was grazed off of uh, of somebody on, on the kickoff. That was their only only positive thing last week, and they're not going to have that many things this week either. I think the Bengals are a good team. Uh, me, me and you have talked about it. Yep. The Bengals are are, are going to be good this year. Um, they're they're right there last week. Um, the Bears are a good team. The Bears the Bengals... are a solid team, and the, and they were also at, uh, in in Chicago, yep. a tough place to play. Andy Dalton did. Kind of he he struggled a little he bit. struggled a little bit but I think he's I think he's gonna be solid here uh, because just Steelers aren't gonna be that good yeah I, I have I have the Bengals I, I agree with you um, the Steelers my God watching their highlights from Week One I was ashamed to to be to be in Heinz Field last week watching that game how frustrated could they be the fans there and Pittsburgh fans are nuts yeah, I mean they're crazy oh my lord if 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 this trend continues the city of Pittsburgh is going to revolt. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to revolt. Those terrible towels are just going to start disappearing, and they're going to revolt. No. It, it'll be the Pittsburgh Pirates in the postseason highlighted over the Pittsburgh Steelers on which, Sundays. Which, it honestly, should be when anyway. Has that honestly, honestly, when has that ever happened, ever? It's never happened, ever. Uh, so I think Cincinnati takes this one easy. Uh, they, they lost a tough game last week, but Jay Cutler and the Bears turned on the second half, and the Cincinnati Bengals didn't. But this week, Cincinnati Bengals will be in control throughout. All right, so I think we have a, we have a couple of disagreements here. Um, I got Carolina. You got Buffalo. True. Um, I have San Francisco and you have Seattle. Yep. Those, those are our two games are those, that we differ on. Is that it? That is it. Uh, all right. But with that being said, last week we differed on only a couple games, and we, we both did pretty well. We did. So, I will take I will take our records in a second. You went 10-6. and six, I went 11-5. and five. We're going to keep those records throughout the season, see who does well. Uh, so we got those two games different right now. That'll be... That'll be the difference. Um, you had, what was the difference? You had Washington winning last I year. I had Washington and you yeah. had the Eagles. I had Miami and you had the, the Browns. The Browns. And then and I had the Rams. You had the Rams, I had the Cardinals. So we went into Monday Night Tide and we were like, oh, it's this for the Bracken <laughs> Rice. And uh, the Eagles, the Eagles pulled pull the tight one out. Uh, so I want to thank you everyone for listening. Again, we'll be back probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week with a recap of week one. And then again next week we got predictions, a recap of week two. There you go. Uh, and then again next week predictions for week three. Thank you everyone for listening. Monique, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, babe. Uh, and thank you everyone for listening. I'm John. It's Mike. See you next time.